Okay, well, we're going to get started. So thanks everyone for joining. Uh, my name is Javi. I'm the co-founder here at CM Builder. We have a special guest today. We're doing something a little different. So Ben Stalker is uh, from Skander Construction out of Chicago. Ben is uh, an all-around great guy, not just uh, uh, representing the customer perspective on CM Builder, but also just generally a uh, thought leader in the construction industry uh, from a technology perspective in the United States. He's a, you may have seen him in all things drone capture, reality capture. He's always trying new things. Uh, I'm learning something every time I meet with Ben, and uh, we thought we'd change it up a little bit. To I can do a little bit of the you know dog and pony show of showing the platform, but uh, with that, I'm bringing a different perspective. Ben talking a little bit about how Scanner's using the platform, and also just ideas they have for the future and how they how technology workflows. Uh, so, Ben, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, excited to show this off. Great. So here's the structure. So we're I'm just because it's a larger audience here. So. I'm just going to dive in and start showing the product and the platform. If you have questions, pop them in the chat, um, and Ben, you can just yell at me and, and answer them. And then we'll do some Q&A at the end as well. Uh, but generally speaking, I'm just going to kind of show the product, show the platform. Ben's going to show some stuff throughout the way. If you have questions, ask questions. And then we'll also have some time at the end for a formal kind of Q&A if people uh, would like to kind of ask questions from there. OK, I am going to dive in, share my screen. Okay, so for I, I'm going to assume I, I see there's some um, some familiar names that have joined, but I, I'll assume you know nothing <laughs> about the product, just to make it easy. So CM Builder, what is CM Builder? What's the elevator pitch? So CM Builder is a fully web-based solution, 100% web-based, 3D site logistics and 4D simulation platform. The idea is all the authoring, all the content creation, all the modeling, simulations, all happening directly in the browser. Right, so there's no locally installed software at all. We are open BIM, so we take IFC, FBX, Step, and now Revit. We kind of capitulated to the market. So many people are using RVT, so we said, hey, uh, let's start supporting that. And um, we also have an Autodesk construction cloud integration we've recently rolled out, which makes the RVT support just that much more beneficial. Uh, but generally speaking, you can bring in your BIM models, you can bring in your drone scans, you can bring in your survey data, drawings, all your project artifacts into a central hub here for construction planning. And then all your temporary resources, the things that show up and leave, like cranes, hoist, fencing, trailer, you know, tra you know, all the, all, you know, cone, you know, all the traffic management type elements. This is coming from a, a catalog inside CM Builder. It's just drag and drop. Uh, I'll show a lot about that today. And then the last thing I'll say is because it's fully web based, you get some of the benefits of the cloud, right? So you can work in multiplayer mode. You can share links. You can collaborate in real time. All these kind of good things around the central model, commenting and stuff like that. So this is like starting with the finish. I'm going to come back to this when I'm ready to show you the outputs, but let's just go and show you how you would build a project from scratch. Um, ben has a much more visually impressive landing page of his uh, <laughs> of his company space, which uh, hopefully we can see later. Um, it looks very but, uh, similar. <laughs> yeah, it looks similar. Yours looks nicer. Yours always just looks a little nicer. Um, so how do we get started? Okay, so logging into the platform. I'm going to be the persona of a project engineer or a superintendent or a VDC engineer. I'm ready to start kind of creating a site, a site logistics plan or simulation, uh, 40 simulation that maybe wants to go out for pursuit or something like that. Oh, can you, someone, someone just logged in. If you can move yourself, that'd be great. So uh, we'll just call this open demo uh, and we'll call this, uh, what is this, February? Uh, so a couple things. So as for user permissions and control, so you have like, user permissions on the platform, of course, but this idea of closed versus org wide, this is just an extra layer of security to only allow uh, certain, you know, people with certain access into closed projects. So the, uh, the administrators of the platform has to grant access to any user, regardless of their permissions into a closed project. Org wide, just, you just see whatever uh, is available to you. Uh, since uh, Ben's not in Chicago, I, I, made a, I made some mistakes with Deep Dish last time I saw Ben. So I, if you're going to go to Chicago and eat deep, deep dish, I, uh, I recommend you you proceed with caution because I thought I was having a jammer at night. But anyways, we'll get into deep dish later. This is a technology demo. Um, ben, did I insult you with that? I know you're very passionate about your deep no, dish. No, no. Okay, no, I'm just making sure we're still on, on the right track here. Um, so I enter an address anywhere in the world, right? So I can say I'm going to Chicago. I'm going to 150 South Wacker Drive. I think that's pretty close to where the deep dish was, if I do recall. Um, I can change the size of my, my map tile, right? Like small, medium, large, depending on what you're trying to accomplish, whether it's a horizontal project or vertical project. I'm showing vertical today, but we, I can show a horizontal example at the end as well. Once I hit generate, 
What we're trying to do here is remove that friction of trying to get your site in context uh, very quickly, right? So you have some idea, you can, you can do a topographic map or flat map. Topographic starts with satellite imagery. You can adjust the terrain after. So we have uh, terrain editing tools that, that allows you some, for example, like uh, Ben and his team might, might fly a drone, get a survey uh, or like a drone surface that you can bring into Scene Builder and adjust the terrain with that. Um, so you can adjust those terrains. Uh, you can change the map thickness. Um, generally speaking, uh, the product's parametric, so you can adjust parameters as needed. Uh, and then the idea is that very quickly, you can just generate like a preview of your site, right? And these massings, so Union Station Multiplex, these are auto-generated, but they're adjustable, right? So you can move them around. Uh, you can adjust these massings. They're just simple massings to start with. Um, now, uh, another thing is that- You can even delete them too, if you have a better model yeah. of that building you want to bring in. Exactly, you could just delete these and start fresh. So the idea is just to get a, a starting ground. Now, you'll also notice the resolution of this image is bad right now. So give it a couple minutes, I'll come back to this and it will it will, it will improve. What we try to do is because it's a fully web-based solution, we have lots of non-software technical folks. Everything is about speed and performance. It's actually a big focus. And in this quarter, we're just continuously trying to improve load times, uh, frames per second, all these kind of things. So this will actually load, oh, there it just did. So you can see the resolution is much crisper now, right? And then you can switch that to street view or satellite view uh, and visualize it in a different way. Um, now, speaking of switching into your own, so the, that's the auto-generated path. You can also bring in like what Ben does a lot, your own, say Google Earth imagery, or let's say an ortho mosaic, uh, image. Now, we don't take the GeoTIFF directly yet, uh, uh, much to Ben's chagrin, something we're working on. So it doesn't auto geolocate your drone image, but you can just FBX it, scale it, and drop it on the map and replace with our project on terrain feature the top of the map. So you just basically say, I have my own aerial image. I just want to replace it either from a drone or from Google Earth or some other you know near maps, whatever you, you're using. That's the 2D side. So you can replace the top of the map with your own image. And then of course, uh, like drone, like uh, Ben's doing a lot, if you're flying drones, you're doing reality capture workflows, you can bring in the 3D mesh, the textured mesh of the 3D as well, which is great for existing conditions type planning to say, okay, here's what we have to the owner or to different stakeholders. Here's what's existing. Here's our plan for demolition. We got, uh, we're gonna manage the demolition in a safe and efficient way. Cause so like uh, drone drone workflows with like drone deploy or propeller or something, something Ben does a lot of, you know, CM Builder, people like connecting CM Builder on the back end of that because you can author on top of things, right? You can just drop down equipment, fencing, plan out your site logistics from that reality capture, uh, which is really nice. And in this case, you might want to take it all the way to, you know, ground improvement. Okay, we're driving piles. We're going to you know, show how we're going to see cats and we're going to excavate and so on and so forth, right? So you can kind of tell that story from existing conditions to demolition through to solid ground improvement, through to ready for ground up construction. So the point of this the part of the demo is, hey, punch in an address, generate your site in like seconds, and then you can improve upon it from there, right? You can bring in your own data, your own information, um, and, and your own project artifacts and go from there. Okay, so I know I'm going fast, but I'm trying to be efficient with everyone's time. So I'm a, like I said, I'm a VDC engineer, I'm a project engineer, I'm a superintendent, I'm ready to start planning. I've, in this case, I've replaced those surrounding massings with my own uh, kind of Google Earth. There's Google Earth recently kind of went open source and there's through Blender, there's like a way you can bring this in pretty easily. If you're interested in this, we can show it to you. Now our medium to within a year goal is to be able to auto-generate something like this directly and just replace those simple massings with more textured meshes like this. But at the moment, you need to just import that, which is pretty straightforward, and we can help you with that. In this case, I have a model. I've got a BIM model from the design team. Uh, let's say I'm going for a pursuit. I've got a drawing. I'm ready to start working, right? So I'm ready to start planning my site setup milestone. So I'm going to go down here in the bottom right. I'm going to go to 2D mode. The first thing I need to think about is access and safety, right? Uh, and a reminder, if anyone just trickled in, if you have questions, pop it in the chat. I can't see anything. I'm flying blind here because I'm in the demo but Ben or Amir will, will, will grab it and you can just scream at me and ask the question. So if you have questions- No questions yet or anything. No questions yet. I'm, I'm, we're putting them to sleep, Ben. We gotta, we gotta up our ante here. Just kidding. Yeah. Just kidding. It's, er I do. it's early. No. Bef before, you, before you continue really quick, I wanna point out the, the 2D mode that you just switched to, that is incredibly helpful, especially for people who aren't as comfortable uh, working in 3D environments. Everyone's already used to you know uh, drawing 
polygons and blue beam and uh, stuff like that. So being able to have that non tech savvy person just switch to 2D to draw their fence lines, show where things are going to be, makes it really easy to build these plans because they're comfortable in that. And then you can just switch back to 3D. Yeah, that's a great point. Actually, we've had a couple customers. They asked if we could lock that view because the mental model of so many, you know, maybe call them old school folks in our industry is like so 2D focused. Like, can you just lock it in 2D and then we'll switch to 3D later? So uh, you kind of can by just putting it in the 2D mode, saving it, and then sending the link to your team and say, here, start working. Uh, but that's a great point. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to think about access and safety. So uh, things like, uh, so I'm going to search my resource and equipment. This is our resource catalog. So we have 1,537 parametric and non-parametric objects, things like swept paths of vehicles, pile driving equipment. What do you got here? Buck, buck hoist, um, you know, concrete pump trucks, et cetera. So I'll talk more about this in the demo, but basically you, you just search what you need in the catalog and then you plan for your temporary works that way. So let's just say, okay, I need a fence. I'm gonna search fence, get a whole bunch of different styles of fences here chain wire, jersey barrier fence, uh, all these kind of things, right? So, you know, different types of fences. I'm just gonna pick a simple fence, construction height, site hoarding. Now, this is really important. So because there's so much, um, so like scene builder is an authoring tool. That's one of the big differentiators. You create new content, right? It's not a viewer on the browser that you do a bunch of work elsewhere and then you pump it in there. You're creating new content in the browser. So you have some sketching capabilities, lines, arcs, circles, rectangles, et cetera. In this job, it's pretty rectangular. So I'm just gonna use this drawing as a reference and I'm just gonna sketch a polyline. So once I hit confirm, what's happening here is it's gonna generate the, so again, I, I did, I kind of missed it at the beginning. The main value proposition of CM Builder is speed and ease of use and accessibility, really. We'll get into that in a second, but like there's lots of powerful, platforms on the market that are complicated and take a long time and it's not so easy for the average construction planner to use. So we're going for speed and ease of use, right? Sketch a polyline, boom, it just creates the content automatically. Now, instantly it'll give you some data. So like how many fence panels you have, what's the length of fence? And I can talk to you about this at the end. You can export that for, for costing purposes for your general conditions or general requirements costs. So if I go back to 3D, as you can see, I just sketched a sketch to polyline generated this fence, right? And now I can double click and I can adjust this, the parameters, I can change the color. Now I kind of sucked up a little bit here because I saw there's a few folks from Monteith that had signed up. I'm not sure if you actually showed up, but, <laughs> but I'm, here I am sucking up to you. But this is the branding feature. So the idea of like building a light digital twin of what your site just is gonna look like, whether it's your own branding, showing up on the fence and the trailers on the cranes, or your client's branding, right? Which if you're going into a presentation meeting, it's kind of nice to walk in there with, uh, you know, with the, the client already saying, oh, here's how the hoarding is going to be working as well. Oh, there's a quick question. How do you deal with- I was just going to interrupt and say that. Yeah, sorry. I, 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 um, so here we, in our user settings, so you can just change your units here. So to metric or imperial directly from your user settings. And then we have global settings at the company level. So if you're in the UK, which some of you are, you can just set your global settings to metric and it will never, you never have to change this. But um, this is my user settings. And because I'm doing demos with people all over the world, I just switch them back and forth, but you would just do it here from your settings. Okay. And then there's a, every once in a while, we actually had Ben, you may not even know this. I know that. Uh, so um, we do release, it's almost like a beta. We don't have a beta because we're, it's a fully web-based solution. We're just like constantly releasing and making the product better, but some stuff that's like a step change in terms of like feature functionality, we put in this experimental features. So Ben, you should try this for, it's called new model streaming format. This will just significantly okay. reduce load times for very large models. We we still oh, have a feature okay. flag on it because there's some edge cases we're fl flushing through and you can always turn it off if you see anything wonky, but um, probably like next week, it'll be just live. You won't even, it'll just be the default, but- um, so It'll be good to try out. I have some large, yeah. some large models. <laughs> yeah, take... so there's two things. So we just like two weeks ago, we did something around frames per second. So like the act, once you've loaded the model, the, the speed is much better now. It should be anyways. And if you don't see that, let me know. And then this was this is on specifically just load times. So if you have multiple models that are very large, your load times will significantly reduce with the model streaming format. Okay, so that's how you handle the uh, units. And then from there, uh, you know, I could keep, keep going with things like gates. You know, right? I can have say gates. Uh, so I could think about like double sliding gates. I could like, think about turnstile gates, et cetera, and uh, these types of things, right? So I could just drop in a turnstile gate. Oh, it didn't cut the fence. That's uh, that's a, I know what's wrong there. I'm going to delete this. 
there's another way to do this. If, 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 if certain fences don't, if certain gates don't cut the fence, what you do is you just adjust the part, the sketch of the fence, you put the gate first and you connect the fence, but I won't do that now for the demo. But they, get the idea. So things like security, you know, sometimes you want to show security gate or uh, wheel washing stations or anything that uh, like, you know, managing how you get in and out of the site should be uh, inside the catalog and just drag and drop. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ma hide the model. So I'm going to go up here into my tree. So I've imported a, a BIM model. I'm just going to temporarily hide this. Okay. Because <clears throat> I'm not yet ready to kind of start my sequencing. So I'm going to go back a couple more things in my set setup before I move on. Really, really, really like one of our biggest killer features is this idea of laying out your site and thinking about zones and not just zones, but how you can texture them and make them look look good and look sharp. So let's just imagine this is going to be where my loading zone is going to be. I can just say sketch a zone. I can tag some properties of that zone. Say, okay, this is going to be my loading area. It gives me a square footage of that area in case I need that for planning. And, I, and then if you have with our premium enterprise, you can texture these elements. So you can texture it with gravel, you can texture with asphalt, et cetera, just make it look a little sharper. Um, I'll get there in the end, but these, these uh, I'll, actually, I'll just show you quickly. So this is what, this is what's being shown here. Like the, this is using the zones to like improve the visual quality a lot, like the finished landscape and the road and stuff like that. So you can expect temporary roads, dirt, sand, gravel, these types of things, the textures on zones is just a nice uh, way to kind of make the demo, the, the simulation pop a little bit. I like to combine low zones with labels. So this, again, so far, like what Ben was saying, the 2D mode, we haven't really left the mental model of what a lot of, a lot of your veteran construction planners already do, right? I'm, I'm in 2D, I'm kind of laying stuff out. Here's my loading area, here's my, you know, trailers or my cabins, um, you know, where's my, uh, my uh, access points, bone yards, these type of things, no fly zones. So I can just start laying out these labels on site and say, okay, this is where we're gonna have trailers or as our UK friends call them cabins. So I'll just drop this. If I hit project on terrain, that is going to drape the map. So if you have a highly sloped site with terrain, with um, topography will drape the map. I'll just do one more thing. I'm just going to do, what is it called? It's called, uh, I like this uh, double stacked 20 foot container. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Double stacked 20 foot container trailer office. So just click, click, drag and drop, right? So if I'm going to drag this in, zoom to selection, Put that brand on top of it, uh, really dead simple. So these resources, this is a 20 foot standard container size. Um, some of them are parametric, so you can just move them as needed, but um, they come in to scale, right? So you're just dropping this in to scale, control C, control V. If I want to just quickly lay out, okay, we're going to have two uh, containers right next to each other. Now you can, I can even snap these to each other. I'm not going to for now, because it was pretty easy to do it, just eyeball it, but you can snap resources to each other for precision and things like that. Um, yeah, so you get the idea. And one thing about location, we do support geolocation as well. So if the models come in with that are already geolocated, IFC or Revit, we will geolocate it based on WGS84. And then we also have local coordinate systems. I'm in the weeds now, but anyone here that does geolocation, uh, first of all, I'm sorry, no, just kidding. I, it's so complicated. Like, <laughs> I've, I've, add, I've added gray hairs to this stupid geolocation stuff, but it's very, I get it. It's very important if you're using, what are you guys using with, in, like in Illinois? Do you have like a local coordinate system in Illinois that you guys reference to or not really? Oh, it, it all depends. Uh, yeah. Typically I'm working in WGS84 for my yeah. horizontal coordinate system and then Chicago has its own vertical datum. So I have to right. calibrate just, I have to use a separate Z. Um, yeah. So, uh, so unit could, instead of you can actually you can actually go into the project settings coordinate system and I actually don't even know let's look at Chicago does it have Chicago I uh, doubt it so you you would need to know like um and like for example for the Australian folks who use MGA do you, like if you have different zones or local coordinate systems like the New Zealand local coordinate system you can plunk it in there and then locate objects based on that like local coordinate system as well. So I, I don't want to derail us on this demo because this is like a, a spider web of complexity, but just so you know, if you want to use local, you know, your geolocate with your local coordinate systems, you can with CN Builder. So that's the main, the main point of this um, discussion here. Okay, back to the live demo. So I, I've laid a few things. So things like soil remediation tanks, muster points, you know, access points, egress, the, all the things you might have to think about at the beginning of the site setup, it's really easy to just drag and drop uh, into the in, into the site plan. 
Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start talking about building a sequence, right? So there's a couple ways to do this. If you're just doing a few milestones, which I know Ben and his team often sometimes you just do one milestone because you're just showing a city person how where the crane is going to go or what trees are staying or going. You could just keep it simple, yeah. or you could just. I have a few examples of that. I'll show. Perfect. Uh, another option is to link your schedule with your program. So if you already have, um, uh, so if I go like here edit schedule sorry so i can like if you have a p6 microsoft project fast power project like a dot pp we take the native file so you can upload your xer and um and um you can just like choose the level of granularity you want to go with your simulation so to keep it simple i'm just going to choose excavation stage one stage two foundations and this job the podium is level eight so i'm going to go here boom 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 and i'll say like weather tight weather tight and topped off facade level 18. So I got these six milestones, right? So the way this works is when I hit apply, essentially what we're doing is we're creating, um, uh, we're, we're reading the schedule and linking it with an ID under the hood. We, we do it, which again, everything's about speed and ease of use and like removing the complexity. Our goal here is not to just build another complicated 4D software, is to say, let's take the good parts of what people like with 4D and make it much simpler, right? For people to do things quickly. So what we're doing here is we're linking the schedule to what we call milestones. Each of these milestones is gonna read the task name and the date. And then everything you do inside Scene Builder links to this milestones, which is linked to the schedule. So if you change the schedule in a month from now, you could just update with new schedule and it's going to update the simulation automatically. I'm just going to adjust everything as you need it. Same thing for the model. So you have a, if you have a BIM model, you've used a, you've uploaded it, you've done a bunch of changes, you built a sequence and you have a new model, you can update with new version and it will keep the sequence as best it can. If you've added a bunch of uh, parts to that model, you're going to have to find a home for those parts. But I have a way to show you how you can visualize that. Um, and then, so you don't have to redo the work. So there's a logic of revisions, right? And that's what part of our ACC integration does for the model side is it just links and syncs automatically your models from ACC onto this construction cloud to CM Builder, right? So you can just say, oh, there's a new model available. I just want to upload it and it'll just automatically upload and do CM Builder. Okay, so um, let me going back to the milestone thing, you were yes. talking about like changing dates and stuff. I also want to just add that on a lot of the plans that we create too, we won't even associate dates with them. They'll just be generic milestone oh. one, milestone two, because it might be early enough in the project where we don't even have, um, oh, you're already on index, yeah. yeah. Or we don't even have dates yet, or we don't want to show dates yet because it's just too early and we can't, we can't commit to those yet with the owner because they might you know, look back at that plan from you know, a year ago and be like, oh, you said you were going to have this done on this date. And it's like, well, <laughs> it's lots changed in a year. So, um, yeah, a lot of times we're just doing generic milestones with, without a dates associated with them um, because, yeah. Uh, yeah, there are just times when that's uh, more helpful. That's a great point. Um, I actually even have a, a thing to remove the dates in your final presentation if you just don't want to show it. <laughs> Highly yep, that's, requested. We, we almost uh, always do that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Unless exactly. it's like really required. No one wants to, like you say, the, the owner come back to you a year later and be like, wait a second here. I remember you showed me that CM Builder simulation. Um, okay, so, so moving on. So now basically you have this concept of linking the program, right? We're trying to link three things together, not two. 40 typically has been schedule model. We're doing schedule, model, temporary resources, everything that shows up and leaves, and even excavation, earthwork, this type of stuff. So I'm in excavation stage one. I'm like, okay, what is this site going to look like at that stage, right? So I, I sketch a cut. In this case, you can control. So we're, you know, one of our more popular features uh, is our excavation. It's very, very fast and easy to do this stuff. So you can kind of like set a wall. So you can set like if it's backfill and slope, you slope in, slope out. You can set your wall slope ratios. You can control each face of the cut individually or all together. In this case, let's just say for whatever reason, I'm going to, my C wall is going to be vertically short and the rest is going to be backfill and slope. I know you'd never do that, but I just want to kind of show what it would look like. So I can just sketch a cut for excavation stage one. I'm going to go to my next phase and I'm going to do another cut. And you say, okay, well, let's just imagine we're going to go from 12 feet deep to 24 feet deep, just to show a very contrasting uh, cut here for, for visual effect. So this time I'm going to turn off my slope wall. So it's all vertical short. I want to go 24 feet deep and I can change the color of each of these operations. Sometimes this is nice to show soil profiles or like anything coming from a geotechnical report or just to show contrast from cuts and fills. So I've got two cuts here, right? If I want to show a ramp down, I can just snap in a ramp. Now we have a ramp here from this feature. We also have a pair. We also have a ramp in our uh, like a parametric ramp in our resources, depending on what you want to do with this. The benefit of using this ramp is it it shows up in the quantity takeoff, which I'll show you in a second. 
and I could just change the color of this too. So the ref's also fully parametric right? width, height, grade, et cetera. So I could just snap it in. As you can see, just in a couple seconds, boom, 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 boom. I got a two cut sequence. Now, as you're working, especially if you control you with a contour line drawing or your topo, you can apply a swell factor and, um, and, and it'll calculate like cubic yardage of your compact and loose volume, which you can export to Excel. Really what most of our users are using this for is like a quick and dirty take earthwork takeoff to understand, okay, this is generally how much dirt we're going to be moving, which means we're on certain productivity rates, how many trucks we're going to need to fill. Do we need staging in the area? Do we need to rent sidewalk? Like you kind of like hopefully asking more questions with the data as you're creating data and seeing you're able to get that data out and then make better decisions with that data, right? That's the kind of idea of this quantity takeoff. Next thing I do, because I know the users like Ben like this. So in each, pro in each project, think of, um, you can run as many scenarios as you want, right? So scenarios are things like, I want to look at two crane, two hoist versus one crane, one hoist. So I want to look at modular versus non, you know, traditional means and methods, or I want to look at different shoring options, right? So I can just take the first uh, scenario, duplicate it, run another scenario, right? And just tweak things. Often in the UK, a lot of customers call this optioneering, like optioneering different solutions for the client. Maybe walk into that meeting and say, hey, we run this, this, and this. Simulation, here's the best possible simulation from our perspective. You know, we try to get buy off with, buy off of that. So like, for example, maybe you want to look at different shoring options here on this face of excavation. So shoring is a big one. So I can just go into my excavation and shoring. As you can see, we have like 31 different parametric shoring options. Uh, let's imagine I just want to use this wood lagging soldier pile. I like using this one because it looks good. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm, I'm all about the vanity here on these demos. Gotta look good, right, Ben? Gotta make those simulations look sharp. Um, exactly. Here we go. <laughs> Gotta drop in a little soldier pile, and then I could just, like I said, double click this, and I could switch this with another resource, um, or I could run another scenario with like sh underpinning with shotcrete or secant or back to slope, and just look at the like look at the schedule implications of both and stuff like that, right? So I can just quickly do that and then adjust and go from there. Okay, now for the more BIM VDC folks, uh, how do you build a sequence from the model, right? And um, so if I imported my Revit model or Tecmo model or SketchUp or whatever you're using for your authoring tool, you can access the tree of that uh, model here, right? So keeping this really simple, I'm in my foundation pour. I'm gonna traverse to where the data is in my model. Now we have ways to reorganize the tree as well. So if, it, if the tree's a mess, which <laughs> often is, unfortunately, uh, you could reorganize that stuff. I won't show that here today, but you can kind of like reorganize your IFC attributes and these type of things. Or in Revit, I believe we're adding the same thing. Revit's pretty new, so I actually don't know how it works exactly yet. We just launched it a few weeks ago, but my assumption is it works the same way. Actually, I think it does work the same way. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go to that, those elements in that model and say, hey, we're going to begin at this milestone, right? Or for demolition, end at this milestone. So I'm going to say begin from this milestone. So I'm just saying these elements are being executed at this milestone. And if I go back, they're gone. If I go forward, they start staying there. And generally in construction, once you build the foundation, it stays there, right? So you know, you, you build it. We it hope so. Stays <laughs> That's the hope. Um, you know, demolition is a little bit, the logic slightly different because you're like removing stuff that it was exactly there. That's where we have the end at milestone. Um, and then the next thing you're going to do is say, okay, well, wait a second. We got to build this, how are we going to do the foundations? Is it going to be, you know, the concrete pump truck, et cetera? So we're now we're going to connect those temporary resources that show up and move. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to search concrete. I need some concrete elements and I'm going to drop this on the map. Again, these are fully, uh, fully parametric, you know, resources. They're linked to the manufacturer's spec sheet. So you can always double check, hey, is this the actual, like all those sliders were all the parameters of that resource. And you can always double check, okay, this is the boom parameters, pump parameters from the actual Alliance concrete pump 61 meter concrete pump truck. Now, if there's something that you don't, that we don't have and you need, you just go up here into this resource request, you pop it up there and say, hey, I need this resource. Uh, here's a, you describe it. Um, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna give anyone ideas, but, uh, Ben may or may not have been walking into a pursuit meeting a few weeks ago with a, a university that has a mascot, and we may or may not have built uh, a mascot for him to really wow the uh, customer the next day in his uh, meeting here. So you can request stuff, we'll pop it in there for you. And, uh, and, and what we really want on a more serious note is, and this was a big problem when we first started, is people were planning with generic resources. Like, oh, I have a hammerhead crane. It's like, well, what size of hammerhead crane, right? What's the reach, what's the max capacity? And like, the, you know, we wanna make it so you're actually planning with the 
temporary resources you intend to use in a real job. Yeah. I just want to stress the importance of both of those things he just showed off, like the, the actual specs of each of those pieces of equipment and then also the resource requests. Like that's it's super important to have like that actual tower crane that you're going to be using, because then when you're adjusting those parameters of it, it's not like if you're you know moving the arm length out, it's not just generic lengths. It's going to the segments that it actually would be built in real life, too, or like that pump truck that he has there right now. You can use that to determine, all right, where do we need to place this pump truck? Is it going to be able to reach all the places that it needs to be reached or do we need to move it to another location? Um, so it's really important that all of those dimensions and parameters are actually accurate to real life. Like it's, it's huge. And then, like you mentioned, that resource request, I've used that multiple times, sometimes for fun objects uh, and then other times because it's a, a certain model of a, a drywall truck that they didn't have in their library at the time. Yeah, the drywall. Um, so yeah, really helpful. Yeah, hi app, hi app, one or whatever. Yeah, I remember you were saying you wanted to validate the reach of a drywall truck to be able to. So you run the scan, you drop the scan in there, and then you put the reach of the hi app truck on there to validate with the client that you'll actually be able to make that pick point, which was really cool. Yep. Uh, great. So, um, so yeah, as you saw there, uh, you know, I was playing construction uh, sim cities here. So a lot of our superintendents or site managers really like to have fun with this, where you can really drop in resources, get quite precise if you want to, and think about, okay, we're gonna have two concrete trucks getting one concrete pump truck to, to pour the foundations. And the next thing I might wanna think about is safety and how I'm gonna handle traffic management. So I can just quickly sketch a water barrier here to say, okay, well, this might be a, a six or eight week milestone to pour these foundations. And then once we're done the foundations, we're gonna use a placing boom or some other way to, to do the rest of the levels. So you can kind of say, okay, this, we're gonna have a, you know, a water barrier here um, and uh, maybe we need some marshals. I believe in the UK, we call these marshals. We call them flaggers here in North America for the most part, um, but you can you can just drop these in here. So things like signage, arrows, cones, you know, all the things you might need to, whoa, this guy went for a little, that's a little wonky. Oh, 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 whoop, whoop. this guy had a few, uh, too many wobbly pops last night before he came to work. Actually, yeah, let's just leave it. Ben, what do you think, we run with this? Yeah, go with it. Looks fun. This guy's got incredible <laughs> core strength. Incredible, like the, the the core strength to pull that off is just something. That, so any, any any fitness junkies out there you know what I'm talking about? Okay, so last thing I need to do is connect these to the timeline, right? So these things show up and leave. They're not just like you build it and it stays there, like the BIM model. So I'm gonna just uh, last you select, last you select these elements. I'm gonna hit right click, edit. Now. We have this idea of from and to as well. So things show up from and to and they leave. So you can just set that where things are going to show up and leave. So in this case, I only want these elements to be here at this milestone, right? Boom, boom, boom. And there's now these are as an ID created under the hood. They will only show up at foundation port and they will leave at foundation port, right? So if I go forward, they're gone. So this, any animation you've created, things coming to site, it all links back to these milestones. And that's when we in presentation mode, it all plays automatically, which I'll show you at the end. So that's an important element. So we've connected the model, the program, the schedule, and the temporary work. So scaffolding and these types of things as well. I'm going to quickly finish. So, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, so I just wanted to show to or mention, I mean, you've showed them both, but there are two ways to do that sequence or the milestone uh, sequencing. Like you can just right click that object and say, begin at this milestone for that pump truck or whatever, or you can go in and edit it and do that from and to. And there's like advantages of doing both of them at different times. It's just nice to be able to do that from two different locations. For sure. You can also just last you select the model. So if the tree's a mess, which happens, you can just use the 3D only. I can just last you yep. select and say, edit from to, or I can say, Edit from and to, or I can say begin or end. So if you're, if I've you're, if you definitely had yeah. to do that on projects. Sometimes, <laughs> well, sometimes you try to say, all right, I just want level one to appear now. And then like certain columns going all the way up the building appear and you're like, okay, well, this was not organized well. So yeah, you have to do the <laughs> manual selection then because the model was not built correctly. Sure. And on that note coming very soon uh, is splitting the mesh inside scene builder. So currently you can't like split the, the already imp imported mesh. Uh, but soon you'll be able to just define it, be like, okay, split at every level inside scene builder. So you won't be at the behest of how the model was created in the past. So that's another thing coming very soon. We first had to ship a uh, delete element. We've done that. And now the next thing is to split. Um, and then this is my model sequencing view. So this is like, 
what's happening in the current milestone, what's coming in the future, what's already been created. And the reason the rest of the surrounding buildings are red is because it's not tied to any milestones, right? These are just existing. So if you do a new model ver uh, vision, this is really helpful to tell you like, oh, we got a bunch of stuff that you've added. You've added a parapet and a barrier or something that's red because uh, it's a new version and we, now you got to find a home for those elements, right? So it's a nice little sequencing view. I could do one more thing and then I'm going to wrap it and pass it to Ben. So crane planning, right? So crane, everyone, it's a very important part of the planning process. Now, in this case, I want to show you a couple of things. So pour breaks, uh, these types of things. You may not have this in your P6 schedule. So you can always add sub milestones directly in here. You're not stuck with just the schedule or just manual. You can combine the two. So if I want to add like a crane installation, I can just add sub milestones after the foundation pour. So, okay, this is when I'm going to have my crane. So this is useful for pour breaks mostly and some other things that maybe the planning department might not cover. But I've got this new milestone I've created on top of the schedules, the schedule I've imported. But the problem is I don't want to show my crane at that one. So I want to turn on the whole building and say, okay, what's the best crane for this job, right? So I'm going to search my fixed cranes and mobile cranes. You can see you got 118 fixed cranes, 161 mobile cranes. So a lot of it, you can you can filter by max capacity, by range, by freestanding height, these types of things. Let's just imagine I'm going to do, I'm in the JSO family of cranes or JASO. Uh, I'm going to drop this sloughing crane. Let's imagine I think I'm going to go outside the footprint of the building. I'm going to use my hotkey A, bring my parameters up. Maybe right away. So I like, you know what, this is not a left and crane job. I have this swap feature. So if I spend a bunch of time and snap it to the slab edge and offset by the tie back, you know, depth, uh, and I have a precise location, it's just not the right size crane. I could just swap, right? I can say, okay, let's actually go with this uh, J560 flat top. You want to swap it? Yep, just boom, swap it up, pull this one up. Okay, now I'm, now I'm using a, a flat top crane uh, and I can control the jib length from here. Now these values you see, it's probably hard for you to see here, 280.5, that's the maximum freestanding length as per the spec of this crane. So if I try to go past 280.5, it stops me because it's like, hey, that's the max, max freestanding length. You can always go in here and take a look at the low tables that are linked to the resource, right? So you can just make sure that you're using the appropriately sized crane and that you have uh, enough reach and it's in a good location based on the hoist location and no fly zones and these kind of things. You can turn on the resource coverage envelope will help you kind of visualize the overall swing of the crane. Maybe I, I like this location because it's away from this freeway, but I, maybe I don't have air rights on this building here or something like that, right? So these are the types of questions that might come up while you're doing the crane planning. And I'll uh, show you how you can start adding contextual information on top of this to uh, that, validate where this makes sense. Go ahead. That resource envelope is really nice. Uh, we use that a lot. I mean, we have a job going up right now where we're building a new building right next to um, the elevated train tracks in Chicago. So we had to, we used that resource envelope to show the, the CTA um, that we were going to be like staying out of the way of the train tracks and not going to have our crane over it. So that visualization is really nice to be able to see those envelopes. That's amazing. See, that's, that's, that's awesome. It's awesome to hear. That is a real life stuff, right? Like these are real life use cases where are, are really critical for planning. Um, I think you also did, didn't you uh, also set up one time like a link of the multi-vista camera like looking on your site and then being able to like go back and forth? Um, yeah. Ben, we may have done that too. So uh, on that note. Yep, that was uh, me. I'm, yeah. Um, so you can think of every milestone as, a, as creating slides, right? So you have these slides where you can capture the angle, uh, where you can add. So capture angle means I want to show this view in presentation mode every time. You can drop in comments like okay, crane swing agreement needed right this is the clickable link that i think ben used so he had a url of a camera on the site that was just like taking pictures every day of the progress so you can actually link that to your simulation here so that if someone was going through this they could actually click that and it would take them to the live camera which is really cool uh, i think yeah really cool. we had a it was a it was a live uh, webcam that we had on the the neighboring building um, so I just included a hyperlink in the CM Builder plan that you could click that and it took you straight to a, a live camera view of the job site. Yeah, that's really neat. Um, and then if I want to just move around here a little bit and like capture angles, what I'm doing is I'm just going through milestones and saying, hey, when I'm guy, it's really it's storytelling, right? Like I'm storing it, telling a story of here's how we plan to attack the job overall, multiple phases and sequences. And stuff like that. So I'm going to move the camera. So when I'm in presentation mode, I want them to see this this view at this time, right? And then at this one at this time. 
And then like, I'm, I'm, I'm triggering this manually at the moment, but when you're in presentation mode, all this plays automatically, right? Um, and so, you, get, you know, I won't get into much more details there. I can sketch out some lines, have some vehicles drive. I can make the crane swing and these kind of things, but you get the idea, right? I've set up all my kind of views, my, my sequence, my temporary work, I've linked it to the program and now I'm ready to, uh, to collaborate and share, right? So um, there's a couple options. If I click share, back to where I started, if I click share, uh, by far the most popular, popular way is to just generate a link. You can set it to be in presentation milestone mode. So it will just show in present, like it will show in full view uh, when you share this link to your client. It just runs in the browser. They don't need to see and build their credentials or anything. It just, it just loads in the browser and runs. So that's option one. Option two is you can create high res, like 16K 2D outputs that you just want to put in a package or something like that. You can also um, export videos, of course. So if you're just like not sure about the internet or whatever, you can just export videos. Um, and then the resource QTO is it's it's going to go ahead and just grab all your counts of like trailers and toilets and uh, uh, lengths of fences. I'll just open up what this looks like. So all your things that show up and leave, it just gives you automatically, it, it counts those and allows you to export this to Excel, which you can further filter and say, okay, uh, well, construction site fence, we got 1100 and, uh, uh, 1157 feet, linear feet of, of, of fencing or fall protection or edge protection, these type of things, right? So you gotta get that. We're not trying to build another estimating plat platform. We're trying to build a better way to account for the general conditions, general requirements, types, costs, the things that show up and leave. And we've gotten a lot of feedback that that's kind of a bit of a gap. Um, often it's like an Excel sheet within that company that says it generally costs this much for trailer per month. But uh, with the link, so what's gonna happen when you're in presentation mode, when you share it to your client, you can set this up where it's gonna cycle through all your camera angles, hide shows, any animations you've done for like demolition zones, bulk excavation, detail excavation. It automatically creates this timeline at the bottom here. So it's cycling through your timelines automatically based and you can, you can adjust this as well. Uh, add logos and brands to the top right here. Um, and then you can kind of like send this through. It's gonna say, okay, we're, start, we're shutting down North State Street. We're pouring the footings on this milestone and we're installing the crane. At any point you can hit pause or your client can hit pause. And now it's just a 3D, 4D um, model on the browser, right? They're just flying through the simulation, visualizing what they wanna see. And they can just hit play and keep going, right? So the idea is that it's a, it's a really nice way to bring your construction logistics plan to life with, uh, with you know, a more of a simulated approach with the timeline at the bottom. So, yeah, so, um, yeah and then you can get to something like this, which is like your final, uh, you know, um, kind of like you add some textures, animations, um, make it a presentation quality. We're, we're not quite uh, at the real time rendering level of visualization, but you know, we're not trying to do that. And also we're limited with what you can do hopefully in the browser where we're trying to get you like 90% of the way there with a fraction of the brain damage <laughs> of trying to do real time <laughs> rendering. So it's you know, a lot faster. Like this, I'm just showing you my screen, right? This is, it is a, it's a pretty high level of, of deliverable output um, that can really make your client go wow when you're in pursuit or in early planning. Um, um, last thing. Michael asked comment. a question. Oh, yes. Uh, my last question about providing documentation for how to integrate the third party visuals, like with the time lapse web camera for, for that, I, it's not necessarily an integration. I just, so I use true look for my webcams and you're able to just share a view only link from true look. And then and the annotations that Javi was showing here, I just put that hyperlink right in there. So it's not necessarily an integration. It's just, sharing the the view only link from true look and then putting it in as an annotation in cm builder thanks um last last one is uh commenting so one big problem we see so if, like ben and i are working on the plan maybe i'm the superintendent ben's the vdc or it's a construction technologist doing the 3d lots of back and forth right? like oh, i changed where i want the fence i want you know a lot of email attachments you can just send the link now and be like, here, just drop in your comments, right? Did we carry this in the budget? So if I want to tag my teammate issue, issue will, uh, inst like I could just be like, here, just mark it up. Give me all your comments and I can just resolve them after, right? So it saves a lot of back and forth. Uh, so you have this idea of collaboration and commenting as well. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to pass to Ben. Ben's going to take over from here. And then at the very end, I'll just talk about business model type stuff. If people have questions. Uh, and we'll go from there. Ben, do you want to take the take the reins? Sure. Stop sharing for a second. 
screen. If there's any questions while we're going through, just pop them in the chat or in the Q&A, and I'd be happy to triage them while Ben is presenting. Okay, so we have, I have like 10 minutes here. So, all right, so um, first I'm starting on my active project page. Uh, I have it on here just because Javier said he wanted to show this off. I like to, I take little screenshots of uh, a stage in the plan um, and then add it as the thumbnail for each one, just so that's easy visualization to get to each project. Um, uh, it's just a nice little quality of life feature when you have lots of active projects. Um, but I'm going to go through, I have like five here that I want to show off. And the theme of all of these, so we saw a lot of, uh, a lot of all the features that you can do or a good chunk of them in CM Builder. And a lot of them looked probably intimidating if uh, if you haven't used anything like this before. So I want to show some of like the simpler use cases in projects because it's a, it's a good, um, I don't know, gateway. It's, it's a nice uh, stepping stone into this platform that are still really helpful and impactful. Um, to be a giant multi milestone um, logistics plan that you need to do for your project. Even something as simple as this one I'm about to show you here can uh, can really help a lot. So on this project, um, we are going to be building a new multifamily housing building right here in this plot of land. And then there's this restaurant next door that's in an old house, but it's there. And we are going to have to temporarily take over part of their um, part of their property a little bit, just so we actually have space to build because there's very limited space here. So we made this little plan here, just showing the existing conditions. And I'm using, this is a drone map that I brought in. So you can see all the sand builders satellite around it. So I flew the drone um, and then exported that model, brought it into sand builder here um, so that we actually get accurate site conditions. Um, and then I did add, even though, <laughs> So you can see here, uh, if I move this table out of the way, um, there were ta they had tables. This like all the planters and tables here that I have on here. That's actually what they had in the imagery, but I just created them in uh, as an actual 3D object too, just so that it shows up better. Um, but then we have our existing conditions, and then this plan that we we're going to show them. Um, we don't have a building model yet, area like this. I could have done a a simple 3D object, but we want to show that we have to move the fence over 15 feet here uh, from its existing spot, which was right here, just on the left side of this yellow block. Um, but we want to show that we need to take over this much and then we were coming up with different new layout plans for them. Uh, and this would just be their temporary layout while we were building the building. Um, and so this is all, all these ones that I'm about to show you all the way, or by the way, are plans that have happened within just the last few weeks. I'm not showing you like my best case scenarios that we did, built nine months ago. Or, like these are all active ones. So like there's not much to this plan yet because it's in very early development still. And like the team right now is still having negotiations with this restaurant owner. So these are all like real time happening ones. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show off on this particular plan is the the restaurant owner had this uh, a, a little library they're called there's you know those like mini public libraries where people can you know take a book leave a book kind of thing and uh, she wanted to make sure that that wasn't going to get impacted and was still going to stay on her property so I used the the resource request um, that Javier was showing earlier and they uh, like within a day I uh, made this little library to put in here so we were able to show that off to the restaurant owner so that's really nice. Um, move interest of time. Let's switch to the next one. So this is another example from uh, just a couple weeks ago here. Uh, again, started with a drone map of this building here. Um, and then what we're going to be doing on this job is primarily an interior build out actually, but there's some as well. So that's what we're showing off here. And this little lower area of the building here. Uh, is all getting renovated on the inside and getting a new roof on it as well. So we made this little plan here just to show um, the scaffolding system that we are going to use and this temporary roof that's going to go over the top um, and just show our plan of how we want to do this temporary roof because this was going to differ from any of the other GCs that were bidding on this job. Um, I actually just found out uh, yesterday that we won this job. Uh, so <laughs> we were just trying to win this still and uh, this plan helped a lot just to visualize what we were going to do with this. So, yeah, that's actually uh, exciting to uh, 
say this helped out. So yeah, there's not much to this plan here. Like this looks really simple compared to some of the ones that Javi was showing earlier, but it can make such an impact still. Just be able to visualize this instead of um, I don't have it up right now. But what the team was going to use if we didn't use this was just like uh, you know like a two D sketch. Like it, you couldn't tell what was going on. It was just a bunch of line work that like you didn't understand what was going on. But being able to see this in three D, you just you know exactly what's going on, where the scaffolding is going, how the scaffolding is going to flow really helpful um moving on so this one so this uh this is not a drone map but this is using that uh that google earth satellite import that javier mentioned you do have to go through blender currently to do this but it is uh blender is completely free to use the plugin for it is free um it's a little more complex than bringing in a drone map, but it's definitely doable. And there's a whole uh, guide on their uh, on the support page. Um, but for this one, uh, this was all. I, oh, another thing I wanted to say about all these plans that I'm showing you here, most of these were completely created by the superintendents um, who have just learned how to do this. Like I give them a 30 minute crash course or something, and then they're building it themselves. So especially the super who built this. So I brought in the 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 satellite model, um, the Google Earth model, but then everything else was built by him after I spent like just 30 minutes showing him how to use the platform. So that's how easy and accessible this is. So um, I actually haven't even looked through all these stages myself, so you're kind of seeing it live with me here, um, it but QA. it's pretty this your, amazing. This is, this is your QA QC right here. We're doing real time. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's it's great what uh, what he's done here. Um, so I know they're doing a lot of rework on the parking lot, and I know there's some roof work, uh, which I think he has showing here too. But just like so, showing off a lot of the things that Javier was showing, like how everything can actually be adjustable and whatnot. So you can see we actually have the truck like in its um, and then like moving on, like look, now I can see that there's, okay, now they're in sequence two over here on this left side. Um, so just it, being able to color code these areas, cause that's like what the owner, I think the super mentioned, like that's what the owner was used to. This was like the color court, the color scheming that they had talked about or planned before. So they use that same color scheme here to show it off in 3D. Um, but then we have all these 3D labels on it here too. So how Javi was showing it, he had it like the projected to terrain. So it's like flat on the ground. But because they're 3D objects, you can also make them up like a, uh, an angle here because I think most of the in presentation view, most of our shots were from like this angle. So the super uh, mentioned how we want the angle like that just so it looked good. It looks like some of uh, this kind of looks like the flagger in Javier's example here where it's a little bit crooked, but <laughs> it, gets, it gets the point across. Um, what else moving on here i know there's some roof there we go yeah so some roof work here too so this was um pretty simple looking but it's nice that all all of these objects the flagging here all, all of the um this uh the switch that we're using around whatever this roof equipment is maybe there are roof penetrations or something um all of that actually will snap to the model as well to make it nice and easy for placement uh, able to pick the exact crane reason. Oh, look, the crane's actually lifting some uh, some rooftop mechanical equipment right now. Um, yeah. So, yeah, all of this was done. Super, who got a 30 minute crash course on this. Um, so really, really simple and easy to do. Uh, let's move on. I got two more I quickly want to show uh, this one. There's not too much yet because this is like uh, very, very early development. Um, but we have uh, this site's actually like four minutes from my house, which is be awesome if I ever have to go there. Um, but it's a it's an existing uh, complex of uh, I think it's like an assisted living or something I I believe. Um, and we are going to be going into this. So you see the drone map of the existing conditions here. We're going to be taking away a lot of parking here and adding in a new expansion to their building um, and adding a new pond over here as well. So this is all we have for this plan so far because this literally just started getting put together. But we have the drone map of the existing area. This is uh, the model of the building created for the drone. And then this is CM Builder's um, detailed massing tool to just make a very basic model of this building to show where it's going to be because we don't have a model of the building yet. 
So we're able to just use this to visualize um, where that building's going. But this is going to be to see, okay, you know, how much of this road do we need to take out? Um, how to impact trick flow? So how, what we're going to use this for, because all of these people used to here in this parking lot obviously need somewhere else to go. So as we build this out more, um, we'll be able to show the different patterns and whatnot and where they're going to have to go to park. I'm sure we're going to have a temporary parking lot somewhere. But uh, as I said, this, this, some of the stuff I'm showing you, this is all from just the past few weeks here. Um, the last one I want to show off, in the interest of time here, uh, another simple one, but impactful. Um, this is a job. We have some, uh, these are going to be uh, some, some modular housing. Um, and the, the, the problem that we have here is that it's a very small plot of land, and there's going to be two three-story um, uh, buildings here. And uh, so very small plot of land. I started with the drone model as I have in a lot of the other ones. So I get everything very existing conditions because on this particular job, uh, the satellite imagery is kind of older and it looks a little bit different than it does currently. So um, it's helpful to have that drone map and model then. So the main thing what we're trying to show here is after we place these uh, buildings here, are we still going to have like, what size crane are we going to have? Uh, and then the biggest thing actually was these come in as, as a, a, a prefab modular building. They're coming in on huge 53 foot flatbed trucks. And we needed to see, all right, are we going to be able to fit that onto the job or get uh, some, uh, So uh, in this particular example, we were able to see that, okay, there's no, oops, I did not grab the item. Um, there's no way we're going to be able to, to have this on the job along the train. So we're going to have to place these either like in the uh, on the sidewalk or in a, a, do a lane closure or something. Um, so we got one on this side and one on this side. Yeah, they're right through the cars, but you get the idea. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this was just like a simple plan uh, just to see, yeah, is this even gonna be possible to bring these trucks on? So uh, yeah, that's the last one I wanted to show off, but the sure. overall theme was here is like, small and simple can still be really helpful to your job and impactful. And especially if uh, some of you are seeing this product for the first time and you might be intimidated by some of the more complex projects you've seen, it doesn't always have to be a super complex project in here. Like just doing little things like this on projects is really beneficial and you can get a lot of information from this or just communicate to the owner team or whoever um, what you plan to do. Um, yeah, it can still be very impactful, uh, and it's simple. Awesome. Um, hey, thanks. Yeah. Hey, hey, so. I think I think we'll, we'll, we'll that's awesome. Thanks so much. Hey, what, while you're there, I don't know if you. So we just added an apartment yep. module resource. So if you want to upgrade, so that that massing that Ben just showed, that's the the massing inside C ability. You can create it. It's pretty simple. So, um, but we actually have a parametric apartments now, so you can actually make if it's seven modules per floor, you put seven. You can actually show it. Click, 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 click. click. It would put a roof on it. So, anyways, if you search catalog awesome. after this, we look for module, and uh, we have an apartment module you can do there. Um, okay, listen, yeah, this good is to great. Know. Thank you so much. I, I pop some some um, uh, commercial information in the chat, so all the pricing, everything's on the landing page. We'll send out this recording to everyone who signed up. I just want to say thanks to Ben. Ben was uh, not uh, you know did this out of the, the kindness of his heart, other than uh, me uh, offering to take him for uh, dinner at the next ground break. Um, but uh, thanks, Ben, <laughs> for doing this. Amazing. Uh, it just goes to show your character and who, who you are. You're always, I see you out there doing podcasts and doing lots of stuff about the overall ecosystem. So it's really awesome. And thanks for your time today. Yeah. I appreciate no, it. Just, I like your product a lot. Just wanted to show it off and get more more people yeah. into it and just show how easy it is to use. I mean, we, yeah. we've just for some of you who have done like 40 stuff before, like if you've worked with, I don't want to like, I don't like trash talking other names, but like if you work with something like Synchro or whatever, that's really complicated and you typically only have VDC people working in there. Having something like this where, like I mentioned, I do a 30 minute crash course with a super and then they're already building plans in here. Like it's, it's just really simple and intuitive to use. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks so much for saying that. Okay, that, that we will wrap it here. Thank you so much. There wasn't much in the q and A, I I don't think, but uh, if there's anyone that wants to uh, learn more, I'll pop my uh, contact information in here and we'll be setting up this recording anyway. Uh, and uh, all the training and support is all included with every subscription. So we work closely with customers to help them be successful. 
And I uh, yeah, appreciate you guys ever taking the time. Everyone have a great day. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, awesome, everyone. Man. Thank you.